Okay, this video is to cover 9.6, which is the ratio and the root test. So it says, let um, epsilon of an be a series with non-zero terms. The series converges absolutely when the limit as n goes to infinity of one term over the next term is less than one for all terms, right? So we usually use the nth term and then the nth plus one term to test this out. Now, if the limit is greater than one, then the series diverges. And if the limit is actually equal to one, then the um, test is actually inconclusive and you'll have to do some other tests to decide the convergence or divergence of the series, okay? Um, so for example one, it says determine the convergence or divergence of the series using the root test. And they give us this here. So again, the root test says that the limit as n goes to infinity of a n in the denominator, meaning 2 n over n factorial in the denominator, and a n plus 1 in the numerator, which means this would be 2 n plus 1 over n plus 1 being factorial. So we can rewrite that as a fraction and just have it as 2n times 2 to the 1, because that's what um, this exponent represents, over n plus 1 factorial, or actually I don't want to write it like that. I want to write it as n plus 1 times n factorial, all the other terms after it, times the reciprocal of our denominator. So n factorial over 2 to the power n. Well, then now you can see that the n factorials will cancel, the 2 to the power n's will cancel, and what we're left with is the limit as n goes to infinity of 2 over n plus 1. Now, since n is 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth, this quantity will always be positive. So you don't necessarily need the absolute values anymore from here on out. And if you take this limit um, as n goes to infinity, what happens is, is that the entire fraction goes to zero. And this is less than one, which means that the series converges. So I'm just going to write that here. The series converges. And not only does it converge, but it converges absolutely. Right? Um, so example two is the same, is very similar. It says use the ratio test to determine the convergence or divergence of this particular series. So um, when we have that, let's see what we, what we end up with. So we're going to go ahead and do the limit as n goes to infinity. And instead of writing it as a giant fraction like I did with this one, I'm going to jump straight into the multiplication of the reciprocal. So if I do um, the nth plus 1 term, this is going to be negative 1 n plus 1, 2 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 squared times the reciprocal of a n, which basically means this fraction here will flip over. Okay, now when I'm simplifying this, we already know that when you have n plus 1, you can break it up into something like that, right? Well, essentially what happens is, is that this 2 to the n will cancel out that n power, which means all you have left is 2 to the 1. The same thing goes for the negative 1 to the n. So the negative 1 to the n will cancel with the n power, leaving you with just negative 1 to the power 1 which means I have negative 1 here, I have 2, and I have n squared in my numerator. In my denominator, I still have n plus 1 squared, which I'm going to expand into n squared plus 2n plus 1. Now again, we know that n is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. So this denominator will always be positive, and this part of the term will always be positive. So if I want to take the absolute value of that, Basically, the only thing that's going to end up changing is that negative 1 will no longer be there. So I end up with this expression. 
and you can use one of two ways you can either use L'Hopital's rule here or you can um, just divide everybody by the highest power of n in the denominator whichever way you choose to do this problem um, I find it faster to just divide by the exponent but everyone's different so however you do this limit make sure you're doing it correctly so if I divide that by n squared I get 2 I get 1 I get 2 over an n and here I get 1 over n squared so as n goes to infinity these two terms will go to 0 leaving me with 2 over 1 which is just 2 now this is greater than 1 which means that my series diverges And so in this case, um, in this problem, I would have to box uh, converges absolutely. For here, I would have to box diverges. And so let's see, I wanna see. Okay, we'll go ahead and do another video for the next. Actually, no, I think I can cover that within another 12 minutes. I normally wanna keep my videos under um, 15 minutes so we'll see if we can cover this in the eight minutes we've got left so it says here the root test theorem so it says if you have a series it converges absolutely when the nth root of the absolute value the limit of this quantity is less than one if the limit of that quantity is greater than one then it diverges and if the limit of that quantity equals one, then the test is inconclusive and you have to try something else, okay? So this is the nth root of the absolute value of your nth term. Now the root test you usually want to apply it is if everything, your numerator and your denominator or collectively has a power of n. So you'll notice here, for example, three, both of these have an exponent of n. Whereas here, we have it in parentheses and you see that it has an exponent of n. So you just wanna make sure that everything has an exponent of n that is shown to you and then you would apply the root test. So for this particular problem, I would say the limit is n goes to infinity of the nth root of my nth term in absolute value bars. Well, we know n is always positive, so this quantity will always be positive and if I take the nth root of something with the nth power, they end up canceling those nth powers away. So what you end up with is e squared over n. And if I take the limit as n goes to infinity, this entire fraction will go to zero, which is less than one, which means that my series converges absolutely. Now let's look at example four. If we were to apply the root test here, we would get the nth root of the absolute value and again the nth root would cancel out the nth power and this quantity here, the fraction, is always going to be positive because it is always positive. So then we get the limit as n goes to infinity of 3n plus 1 over 2n plus 1. And again, whether you're using L'Hopital's rule or whether you're using the division by the highest exponent in the denominator, you should still get the same value for the limit here. So if I divide everybody by n, I get this expression. And if I take that limit as n goes to infinity, then I end up with just 3 over 2. This quantity is greater than one, which means that my series actually diverges. And we were able to complete that within our time limit here. So in the next video, we'll go ahead and jump into 9.8.